My Lords, um, I declare an interest as a member of the Green Party since 1988, and our manifestos since that time, 40 years, have actually included all, almost every single issue that we've heard about today. And there's been some excellent speeches. And it seems to me that that's partly because we have waited so long for this bill. Uh, and the noble Lord, the Minister said himself that it's um, an important bill and there's been a lot of anticipation around it. Well, that's absolutely true. And of course, there is also the fact that your Lordship's House has a level of expertise on so many diverse issues that are going to be relevant for this bill. Um, during the time that we've waited for this bill to actually arrive, there has been a huge amount of uh, uh, strength of feeling by your Lordships about our natural environment and how to preserve it. And that strength of feeling has translated into action. So we have made legislative changes, for example, uh, to the Agriculture Act, the Fisheries Act and the EU Withdrawal Acts. But that strength of feeling and of action has actually been hampered by the government because we've had repeated assertions, promises that whatever we brought up was not appropriate for that particular bill, but it would be appropriate for the Environment Bill. And although the Noble Lord, the Minister, wasn't any uh, one of the ministers making those promises, of course, we are going to hold the government to account for those promises. And sadly, he's going to be in the firing line. And so uh, all these issues have been saved for the Environment Bill and it's water and air pollution or forestry or biodiversity or, or farming. They've all been saved up for this bill. So I can imagine there's going to be a lot of amendments and quite honestly, I'm very excited about that and looking forward to it. But I'm not going to argue that we have uh, an environmental crisis or an ecological crisis or uh, a nature crisis, a planetary crisis, because for me, those things are absolutely self-evident. What we have is a political crisis. We have a government that simply doesn't want to enable us to do our job. And the noble lady, um, Baroness Young of Old Scone, had it absolutely right that if the government does want a safe, fast passage for this bill, then the best thing would be to accept some of these superb amendments that are going to come from your lordships. There are many more amendments required if we're going to actually face up to the scale of the damage of uh, what is happening to our planet and to the human race. Now the bill does have some ambition but it falls far short of what is needed and not least the fundamental mechanics of this bill are hooked on a duty for ministers to merely have due regard to the environmental policy statements and this creates a very weak foundation that can be overridden by ministers far too easily. And so the noble, noble lady, Lady Boycott, when she was talking about the Office for Environmental Protection and the noble lord, the Lord Bishop of Oxford, they both cited a lack of independence. And that actually makes it dysfunctional and even pointless. And so that OEP, the Office for Environmental Protection, really does have to uh, be bolstered by some good amendments. And then there are the concerns raised by the Bingham Centre on the rule of law. There are many more noble and learned lords who will be able to articulate those issues um, coming later in the debate. But the point is quite simple. The government is creating a new system of environmental law that is almost undeserving of being called law because it's so full of loopholes and get out clauses and allows unlawful acts to carry on impeded. Now, the Greens in your Lordship's House are going to be incredibly helpful during the passage of this bill. We will try to help the government to improve it as much as we can. But none of this is from the government itself. This government is, has promised to leave the environment in a better condition than we inherited it. And this bill doesn't do it. Lord Khan, the, the noble Lord Lord Khan, actually called it step backwards and I actually think it's a full retreat in some places and so it's actually incumbent on your lordship in our house that we defeat the government
vigorously and repeatedly during the coming stages of this bill. We've got to do it for our own well-being, but also for our children, for our grandchildren, and for the humans and species who will inherit this earth long after we have gone. And uh, the, Duke, the, the noble lord, the Duke of Montrose, talked about unpredictable nature. We have to be absolutely sure that what we're doing is the safest way forward. And I do believe that although the noble lord, the minister, is very committed to the environmental agenda, the government is not. They simply don't understand that the environment encompasses everything. It's not an issue on its own. It actually encompasses the economy and transport and education and social well-being. It's absolutely everything. And this bill is our one opportunity to get it right.